You want to see an epic fail and how I handled it? Stay to the end. Enjoy the video. Okay, so this video, um, obviously I'm filming this part after I did the finish, but this video is more in how do you fix a failure when your finish doesn't come out like you want it to. That happens quite a bit. And I'm gonna show you guys a quick fix that works a lot of the time. All right, so the uh, sample board has been prepped with two coats of the Stone Coat Countertop White Undercoating. Now this is the epoxy undercoating that we sell on our website. It comes in white and black. So what do you do when you're gonna do a top that's not white or black? I'm gonna show you. What we're gonna do is fog our edges with a gray color. You can do this with any color on any project. Now, if you're gonna use a latex paint or something like that, and you have that color, that's fine. But this helps me not to have to buy gallons of different color paint. The reason that we're going to fog the edge is because when you do a finish, the thinnest part of your finish is the edge. And because the epoxy is thin, you can actually kind of see through um, to the color that it's gonna be easier than you can see through if it's on the top. So by fogging our edges, the color that's gonna be predominant in the finish, we kind of fool the eye and save some money. All right, so I'm gonna use stone gray, it's just Rust-Oleum uh, spray paint. Let that dry and then we'll go to the next step. I want you to pay attention to the way I fog the surface. I did not leave a very hard line with my spray paint. It's very soft and it kind of fades out. If you leave a really hard line, if you come over with your spray paint and you go very slow and there's a very hard line, there is a possibility that that hard line will transpose through uh, your uh, design. We're using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy today and uh, zero VOCs, no solvents are involved in this product. So it's very, very safe. That's why I don't have a mask on. Also, I'm working in a very large, well-ventilated area. All right, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio, very high heat, very high scratch resistance, and very high UV protection. All right, so I'm doing three ounces per square foot. So I've got eight square feet on my sample board. So I'm gonna be mixing up 24 ounces. Now, I put in part B first, and the reason I do that is part B is less viscous, thinner, basically, and it's going to be easier to get a more um, correct measurement if you put in B first. Part A is quite a bit thicker, so it falls down through part B pretty quickly. I'm gonna stir it or mix it for about two minutes. A way to kind of check and make sure that you're mixing it up properly is after you're done, turn your buckets over, let them drain for two or three days, and the whole um, inside of this bucket should pop out and be one clear piece of epoxy. And you should have no residue left on the inside of your bucket. If your bucket feels sticky, then what's happened is you haven't properly mixed all the product that's in your bucket. That's pro tip. Okay, as you can see, we have a lot of products here, a lot of colors, which is gonna make this a really fun finish. Um, so all of these products, except for the uh, two at the end, can be bought on our website. A lot of you guys didn't realize that we are distributors of Stone Coat Countertop products. We have all the products, all of their mica powders and colorants, and check out our website, rk3designs.com, to see all that. Okay, so the other two products that I'm using uh, are from my bestie, Erica, at Artist Till Death. She has a plethora of colors, guys. She's got over 750 colors uh, in different products on her website, artisttilldeath.com. So we're gonna use tonight Color Obsession, and it is a diamond shimmer. Now, if you can't get this, you can also use our product, Diamond Dust. Um, diamond shimmer has a little more opaqueness than the diamond dust does. So I really thought it would be great for this product project. Another color 
is called Dark and Stormy, and it's by Color Passion. This is a non-metallic uh, paste, and it's just gonna give a level of depth. So guys, you don't have to add these colors. If you wanna stay true to just doing the grays, then you don't have to add any of the blues that I'm gonna be adding. I just really love these blues in combination with these grays, it looks amazing. But if you don't want any color, then you'll not want to mix up uh, any of the blues that I have going on. All right, so I kinda have these laid out in the uh, order of amount uh, the ratio that I want. I want very little of the colors down here in my cup and I want more of these colors on this side. So I don't measure, guys, for any of y'all all y'all that know me, I'm a terrible measurer. So that's why my cooking is so bad. But I do a pretty good job with epoxy, I do have to say. All right, so we're just gonna eyeball this. We'll have a list of all of these products that we used will be in the description of the video. Also, you can go to our website, rk3designs.com and click on the tutorial page and you'll actually see even more still shots of this project along with a list and links to the products that we used. All right, so we're gonna come in a little bit less. Now I'm using a white opaque dye. Don't look, I, wanna, I don't want a lot of that. I'm gonna do a little bit more of the diamond dust. Now I'm just gonna come in with a tiny bit of the dark and stormy, because I really don't want a lot of that color in there. Okay, time for the fun part. All right, so I'm gonna start laying down my colors. And there's really no particular way to do this. I do have in kind of my head where I want my white areas, I do want blocks of white instead of it all just to be melded together. All right, now let's start laying those silvers and grays down. This is titanium. And now we're coming in with a black, which in my opinion is not truly a black, it's more of like a gun metal. This is the blue earth. Now you can do this two ways. You can do it with a brush or you can do it with your hand. If you use a brush, you're gonna get a little more distinct patterns than if you use your hand. I'm gonna do both. You guys let me know what you think. Now we're gonna do some cross hatching. This is where we're really gonna make our design pop and every which way. Don't go in one direction too much. So we're gonna come in with the uh, diamond shimmer and then we will um, lay it down in geometric shapes and then we'll wait probably another 30 minutes. Your piece is not gonna look exactly like my piece. So if you're at this stage and you really like the way it looks, don't go to the next step, which is what I'm fixing to do. You are the judge of your own piece. Um, I do want to do a little more cross hatching. I want a little bit more texture. Okay, so I talk a lot about finishes and making it um, pieces that you really like, but ever so often you hit a wall and you create and you end up hating it. Well, this is it. I am not liking this at all. So I'm fixing to slap some black paint on here and we're gonna see what happens. This is probably going to be an epic fail but we're gonna try it. And I'm gonna bring you guys right along with it. So, let you know that I mess up too, guys. So I'm coming over with black Rust-Oleum gloss paint, and I'm doing it pretty opaque. However, I can still see through the finish a little bit. I can still see what's underneath it. I'm gonna do this little area a little bit lighter so you guys can see the difference. All right, all right. Now we're gonna come over with plain isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna do 
the famous Italian drip. Now we may have gone past the point of no return because my epoxy's pretty set up right now. So it's gonna have a hard time. This alcohol is gonna have a hard time getting the epoxy to move. Now, it looks like I'm putting a lot of epoxy on the surface, I'm really not. You get too much alcohol, and what will happen is that your finish will uh, get really runny. Now, you're gonna have to just leave this alone for a good 10, 15 minutes. All of this alcohol needs to react with uh, the epoxy, and that's gonna take a little bit. Don't react to it right off the bat. Give it some time. Now, if you ever do this technique on the edges, you, got, you do have to wait until your epoxy sets up. If not, you're just gonna have a lot of runs. Ah, I'm debating whether to even upload this to YouTube. So, I'm really frustrated. Can you tell? Everyone can have some bad days, everyone. And really, this was nowhere near the finish that I had in my brain when we started it. And it's nowhere near the sample board that I did for this. Um, so what I'll do, I'll regroup, I'll figure out what happened, I'll do another one. But until then, I didn't want to waste this finish. So I wanted to show you guys, when all else fails, Spray that puppy with some black spray paint, spritz it with some alcohol, and turn it into instant granite. Awesome, gorgeous. If you like seeing me screw up, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. I promise I won't post all my failures, I promise. And uh, hit the bell for future notifications. Guys, we go live every Tuesday night, 7 p.m., and we have a blast. We actually do a lot of things like this where we interact with you guys you guys actually tell me what to do next, and we have a lot of fun. So check us out, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, check out our website, rk3designs.com, where we do sell all of the Stone Coat countertop products on our site. Don't be scared. That's the main thing. When you screw up, don't be scared to move forward and always be creative. Until next time, I love you guys. I'll see you later.